Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Lookout. Someone wanted to, someone suggested we do a countdown timer so uh, people have time to get on there. So uh, there you go. Music by my friend Mark Groudon. Uh, visuals from hometown of Westwood. Today we're going to talk about the Mill, Mountain, and Rum fires and take a look at the Cedar Fire up in uh, central western Oregon. There was no um, infrared last night from the National Infrared Program available for the Mountain Fire or the Mill Fire, but we did get uh, Firis, which is California State OES plane, uh, was up around midnight. Firis is um, great, gives you a perimeter, and sometimes they um, share videos of their heat on Twitter. Uh, nice thing about Firis is it's public, um, publicly available, so they publish their perimeters pretty quickly. Um, to a site that you can load as a member of the public. So we've got that. Um, the only problem with virus is it doesn't show you kind of fire intensity, not like the, the NIROPS, the stuff we usually show. Um, we don't have any new information on the mill fire. It, um, it seems like it's cooling down, and the main news there is um, more on the human side of, um, you know, that some people did die in the fire and um, a lot of the damage. So I'm um, not going to cover that much just because um, I don't have a lot to tell you that you probably can't um, be informed on elsewhere. Uh, but we are going to talk quite a bit about the mountain fire because it, it is an interesting fire. And um, yesterday it, it definitely um, kind of did what it wanted quite a bit. So um, let's jump in there. Oh, if you're just joining us, my name is Zeke Lunder. I um, run this site called The, Wet, um, the Lookout. I'm a... Um, wildfire analyst and mapping specialist and I've been doing this for um, since about 1999 and we're sharing publicly available information here and um, the goal of the lookout is to increase the literacy the wildfire literacy of people in the area we serve so this is the mountain fire um, just to kind of give you the big picture we've got um, Fort Jones up here, Etna, Callahan is the Scott Valley. Over on this side, we've got I-5, we've got Weed, um, going up towards Wairika, here's Gazelle. Don't mind these red dots out here, that's just an old layer. Um, then we've got the Gazelle Callahan Road, paved road that goes over the, the mountains here. This area hasn't had a lot of fire history, you know, we talk a lot about fire history here you know when was the last time this all burned and uh there's just not a lot going on on the map here for fire history so we're gonna come in here and look at the fire and then i'm gonna turn on the, a map from the command team here's the road it goes through here the fire started got along the road and initially it kind of was influenced by the same kind of southerly winds that blew the mill fire it started the afternoon that the mill fire was uh, as it was kind of winding down so the fire blew this way and we talked about how it kind of was already at the, kind of the top of the hill, so it wasn't able to make a lot of upslope runs. But that hasn't really stopped it from moving pretty vigorously. So yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, it kind of burned out this bowl here. And then yesterday, um, it kind of steadily marched. Like this, this infrared we're showing is from the night before last at 8 p.m. And so um, yesterday, kind of between 8 p.m. the night before last and... Last night at midnight, in this kind of 24, 28 hour period, the fire burned a couple miles out to the west. And so often we don't get um, real, you know, rapid runs, kind of cross slope or flanking. It made a big run um, in the evening after this was mapped um, out towards the west, kind of with the night air kind of sinking into the Scott Valley. So this perimeter we're showing you right now is from midnight last night. And then I'm gonna jump over here to a map real quick. Okay, so here's um, here's the Callahan Gazelle Road. And this side of the fire really hasn't spread that much to the east side. And then there's Dozer Line here along 
this bottom flank of the fire. There's a bunch of dozer lying out here though. Um, Cal Fire's pretty aggressive about dozer lines and they've got a lot of dozer line out here. So this side of the fire, there was some, it was showing some heat here last night and that was basically them uh, firing to fill in this little hole. They've kind of kept um, good tabs on this whole south end. Yesterday, and there's some indirect dozer line out here and there's some direct line near the fire and the big thing yesterday was just that the fire was kind of pushing down and they didn't have a lot of good spots to kind of come in and pick it up out in here where it's hot. So it's pretty wild kind of broken country. Um, one of the areas of concern, if they didn't pick it up overnight, is just that the fire's been backing aggressively down through this um, kind of commercial timberland in here, down towards Moffat Creek. And last night um, at midnight, they were showing some spots out here in the Moffat Creek. And so there's kind of potential there that if they, that this basin, this whole basin could kind of go of upper Moffat Creek if they don't kind of pick up this edge, which is kind of in tricky country. So we'll zoom around and look at that. Um, you know, the problem is just if it does kind of get established in Moffat Creek, it could kind of get out of there. Uh, just, it's just not, it's not, it, it's kind of deceptive looking ground on, um, on a topo map. So here's what we're talking about with those line kind of coming down this whole, um, south end here. This fire here is, uh, they kind of filled in yesterday. They kind of fired, I think this out. And so there's dozer line out through here, it kind of comes down in, and there's um, there's dozer line out in here. And this is the area that was real active yesterday. And I just don't have this color with any sort of fill because that's not the way I get the virus data. It just comes in as a perimeter. So for, um, you know, we just have a snapshot of it at midnight. There's some dozer line farther out that's showing on the map. And... Um, on the webcams, it looked like it did burn kind of fairly actively through the night. But nighttime is usually when we can get um, a lot of work done on these fires. So as we come around here um, in the Moffat Creek, this is the north end of the fire. And we can see that the fire is kind of backed actively. So this is um, a little over a day's worth of spread from here to here. And that's pretty, um, that's pretty vigorous, you know, spread for spreading downhill. Um, so it's gone through all this commercial timberland and it's kind of slopped over this ridge and so we'll see what um, what gets done as far as how they're going to be able to pick up this flank it's a little messy it's not a, you know it's not a great spot on the landscape to um, to deal with but they've got roads and you know good access just a matter of, you know, if they were able to get crews in underneath this overnight and how steep a ground they can push dozers on here. And we talk a lot about kind of alignment of wind and slope and everything else. This drainage is kind of tucked in out of the, you know, uh, out of the winds. But um, there were spots in here last night that uh, with good access, I'm sure they're um, hitting as hard as they could. This is kind of the linchpin of what's left to work with on this fire, I think. Um, you know, there's good access and dozer and everything happening on the west end of the fire. So um, what happens here in Moffat Creek is going to be interesting. You know, I think with all the smoke kind of that's been sitting in, we haven't had um, a lot of aircraft support on this fire. There's been some uh, helicopter drops on the hotter areas of the flanks, but they haven't got a lot of retardant used in here, mainly because of smoke. So just kind of today, the thing to watch for us is just going to be what happens in Moffat Creek. Um, these spots are showing up out here and I don't know how old ago, how long ago they were mapped, but I think they're, um, on the, on the map, they're showing, you know, plan dozer line out through here. And like we've said before, um, dozers move faster than mapping. So, um, you know, they've got a bunch of dozers here and they're out pushing every ridge they can. So likely there's dozer line in here. And as we've said before with dozer line, dozer line, often doesn't do you a lot of good unless you have time to fire it. So, you know, we can have a dozer line on this ridge, but if the fire gets established and makes a run at it, it's not going to really stop the fire unless we've got um, a bunch of aircraft or it's getting fired. Anyway, that's um, that's kind of the story here. You know, the, one of the stories on this kind of northeast flank is just that it hasn't moved much. You can see uh, the, f the solid colors are from the night before last. 
And then this red line is kind of where the fire was at at midnight last night. So all through this kind of area here, the fire hasn't really spread. And then it kind of is flanked down into here. It's like I said, it's kind of deceptively steep. Uh, it's kind of hard to show that on this imagery. But like this, this area here, when you look at, you know, these, these bluffs where the fire's kind of slopped down in here, it's like, it's pretty, that's pretty wild country. Um, this land here that we're looking at with all the, um, the clear cuts on it is, um, it was formerly owned by the fruit grower supply company. And as we've said, you know, one of the things that we've got going on in this whole kind of part of the world is just that, uh, we've had sawmills in weed and Wairika and, uh, in Scott Valley, Fort Jones. Uh, you know, there's been sawmills around this country for a long time and we've cut all the big pine trees and now what we've got left is a lot of small second growth trees that are more susceptible to fire and it's kind of tough country to try to grow trees just in that it's it's hot it's dry uh, and fire's just um, kind of a constant threat so it looks like um you know, taking some losses here. It'll be interesting to see how much farther the fire spreads in this country. Uh, someone had a comment over here. Um, why don't Why don't I talk about the lava fire? Want to talk about uh, weed? Uh, I guess I didn't talk about it with um, with this fire we just had because it didn't seem like it was really going to be in play tactically. Um, I'll see if I can pull it up here. All right, so here's the um, lava fire in blue. Those red dots out here in the mill fire are just um, from the heat from the day before yesterday. So uh, too many layers. Have to figure out how to turn them off. But yeah, here's the here's the lava fire. It's just real similar to um, the bulls fire and the mill fire in that you get these long skinny runs when the wind's blowing and then as soon as the wind stops blowing, we got pretty uh, decent ground for air tankers, etc. But yeah, I didn't mention it just cause it seemed like this fire wasn't blowing into it, but you're right. It is, it is close. Uh, another thing that I can't not talk about here is, um, just the crazy amount of, um, marijuana farming going on out here in, uh, these are old photos. Um, but there's all these crazy little subdivisions out here. Um, in in the juniper, basically, and uh, wackadoodle amounts of greenhouse plastic. Uh, it's crazy. I, I had no idea. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll find a better image. But um, craziness, man. Um, all that stuff burns in a fire, and then some firefighters got to carry it around in their lungs for the rest of their life. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, anyway. Let's go to the Rum Creek Fire. Here somewhere, Grants Pass, here we go. All right, hope I'm not making you car sick. Um, Rum Creek Fire, been talking about this one for at least 10 days. Uh, we're looking at I-5, Grants Pass. Um, so Rum Creek Fire's been uh, burning the Rogue River Canyon. It's really kind of a slow motion thing now. 
Um, not much new spread except in places we've already been watching. Um, fires ended up burning down to the river here. There's a little heat left on this little um, peninsula. Fire's cold all the way around the east flank until you get to the very top where we've been watching it for a week saying that it wasn't very good places for them to fight fire. Still a little heat in there, but that's the only place that's really got anything happening on the whole east side of the fire. These white lines are uh, last two days of spread. It's cold going down into uh, Rainy Falls area, cold along the river, and then uh, still spreading slowly, you know, a couple hundred yards flanking a day here um, west of Rum Creek. And they've, last night is of like uh, 8 p.m., that's this mapping. They've fired off the hand line that they have. That So they're kind of completing their box here. Um, they fired dozer line along the top. They've kind of been keeping pace with this fire. Um, can't tell if this is like, uh, you know, how much of this interior was interior lighting or if they're just lighting it back. But uh, looks like they're probably getting some pretty decent fire effects out of all that. Um, it's kind of cooling off along the dozer line along the top and uh, it's cold on this flank kind of to the west of Galice. So all in all, kind of slow and steady progress there. Uh, looks like they, you know, they were worried about some weather. Looks like they've, uh, they've weathered the weather. So uh, there you go. All right. Um, last one we're going to cover here is Cedar Creek fire. This is, um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of flying around crazy here. Um, you got um, Sun River and Bend over here. You've got Eugene over here, and uh, Oak Ridge is out in here. I don't know why it's not labeling it for me, but um, we've been watching this one just because, you know, we talked about how it's a worry to have a fire with a bunch of potential um out to the west when you go into east wind season and so um this fire spread a little um there's heat out here in this area that looks like it's mainly lava so i don't know uh must be some some little trees out there to is that lava or is it a burn i don't know but there's some spread out in there on the north end of valdo lake quite a bit of it actually and some spotting um, not a lot of spread on the rest of the fire, but it's a big fire and, um, we'll keep an eye on it. I don't really, uh, I haven't had time to really research it much, but it had a radical amount of spread a couple of days ago and now it's back out into, it's headed east here, but, uh, gotta keep an eye on it. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at some comments. People say great news on the rum fire. All right. Okay, everyone. Well, we're going to keep... main thing we're keeping an eye on right now is Mountain Fire. Uh, it's the one that's got some potential. They also got a lot of resources. There's not a lot else going on. And um, Cal Fire is good at aggressive firefighting. So it's uh, it's good odds that they'll, uh, they'll make some good progress on it. There's just this heat wave and uh, the smoke kind of taking away our aircraft are kind of complicating factors there but they got a lot of iron and uh so we'll keep you appraised um debbie w just gave me a tip thanks thanks a lot catch you all later